um, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 tonight. Um, I know, well, we finished Ruth up last week. Well, it is on video if you want to go back and watch it. It was, uh, but second, it's amazing. <laughs> We were in three. Uh, three and four just kind of, they just kind of flow really quick. Um, but 2 Corinthians chapter 1, um, you know, for some of you, this is really going to, this is going to be helpful stuff. To others, it's going to be kind of uh, the milk of the word as, uh, as the Apostle Paul says. But, you know, sometimes we need that. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it deals with uh, basically experiencing righteous correction in your life. Now, a lot of times, you may not know that you need correction when, uh, when God allows you to go through things. And, we, and I say correction, but sometimes you just need to, you need to be corrected on, being, on just uh, being able to understand things better. Maybe you don't have a good understanding of... Instead of, you know, not necessarily like a whipping, but, you know, why like Right, right. You, you know, sometimes, um, you know, if, if if God's preparing you for something, um, you know, something that you have no idea about, or you maybe you have a misconception of it, and uh, whenever it, it comes to dealing with that, maybe you don't have the right empathy to uh, to be able to uh, to help somebody in that respect. God would allow you to go through something to correct your understanding of it so that you can be able to help someone else in the future. And that's what 1 Corinthians really talks about as, as we look at that. So uh, if you look at the first two verses here, I'm just going to read them. There's really not much there for us to glean from, except um, we know it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are, which are all in Achaia, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So really not a whole lot there to glean from, except we know that the Apostle Paul is writing this to the church that is at, at Shea, uh, and these guys are part of the Corinthian um, church there. <coughs> Excuse me. Now look at verse 3 with me. I'm going to read all the way to verse 12, because it kind of deals with the same subject matter. And I want you to... Uh, to, to kind of have this concept in your mind as, we, as I read through it, that going through things helps you and it helps others. Now, you may, not, you may not think so as you're going through it, but when you get to the end of that road, uh, you'll look back and say, it was good that I went through that for whatever reason, okay? So uh, we're going to look at starting at verse 3. It says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Do you see in there that the Apostle Paul has given them this information? He's going to have some subject. He says that, you know, Jesus said that you will have tribulation in this life. Welcome to the world. You're going to have tribulation. You're not going to get out of it. If you live long enough, you're going to experience problems. Well, that's not what 2 Corinthians says. It says that, you know, you're going to go through things. And he said, God can comfort us. And he allows, and he's allowing us to go through some things so that we can also comfort you in this and encourage you through this. Verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that, it, that as ye are partakers of the suffering, so shall ye be also of the consolation. Basically, he's just said, when you go through these things, 
If you'll trust in God, you will be comforted, you will be consoled, and you'll be able to help others along the way also that maybe experience something very similar to what you do. Verse 8, it says, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to you, that which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch we despaired even of life. Now, there is a thought out there, and it is a misinterpretation of Scripture, that some that you will go the, it, the way that they present the Scripture is that uh, God will not allow you to go through things that you can't handle. This verse does not say that, does it? More or less, it's, it's more if He brings you to it, He'll bring you through it. That's yep. The way I've heard yep. It. God gives you grace to get through it. The Apostle Paul even acknowledges this. He said, "What we were going through, it was more than we could handle." It was above measure. We couldn't handle it um, of ourselves. Um, we had, uh, it, he said, pressed out of measure above our own strength in so much that we wanted to die. We despaired of life. We were like, God, just let us die. We cannot go through this anymore. Take me out of this. I'm willing to not live anymore to be done with this situation. That's what he's saying right here. He says, we even had, in verse 9, it says, we even had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust, that we should not trust ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead. You know, when you feel dead inside, God excels in resurrections, and he can raise you up when you feel like my life is over, okay? That is very, very important for you to, to realize. There's a lot of people that commit suicide that they forget that they know Jesus Christ. They've had a born-again experience, but they get so caught up in themselves. They get so caught up in whatever it is that's going on in their circumstance that they have the sentence of death in their life, that they just, they're willing to hurt themselves. They're willing to kill themselves. And they don't understand that God can deliver them if they would put their trust in it. If they'll put their trust in him. Go ahead, Brother Sean. I was going to just comment, you know, that what this, this may make it of a passage in First John. Um, it just talks about, um, uh, in 1 John 5, it says, For the love of God, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Yep. Um, that's exactly what he's talking about there, is that, you know, these commandments that have been given, they're, they're not burdensome. Because we know that our victory is in Him, and not in, uh, in our, you know, our faith, not in ourselves, it's in Him. Right. That, that's that's where that. That's kind of like the definition of joy. You know, like a lot of people are misunderstanding joy as happiness, and it's, it's not happiness. It's 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 victory. It's living in Jesus. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, one of the one of one of the, it's a big issue in in our day, and I I really don't know exactly why. I mean, we can have some discussion about it, but. Uh, there is the thought that if you have suicidal thoughts or even tendency that there, you know, that there's something wrong with you, or, or maybe even in the from a Christian perspective that maybe you don't, maybe you're not even saved. And here we see that the Apostle Paul says, "I had suicidal thoughts. I had the, the same problems. I wanted to hurt myself, but he's but he." But he was able, he knew just enough about God. And that's the problem I think that, mo that many of us have, is that we just don't have enough knowledge about God. Uh, maybe, you know, when you go through things, you become, better, you become better off at the end of it than you are while you're going through it. And that's why you go through things. So he can make you better, so he can make you stronger, uh, bolder, braver. But, you know, as a young Christian, maybe you don't, you're, you're still young in the faith. You don't know. Um, and some, sometimes even older guys that they forget how that God can deliver them through it, and or they think that the deliverance on the other end is not worth it, and they just. Uh, we see here that the apostle Paul had these same thoughts. We see an Old Testament character that had very similar thoughts. His name was Elijah. I mean, this guy called down fire from heaven, and he's like, "My life is over because I've got a, I, I've got people that want to kill me." They've taken all my friends. They've taken everything that I have. Life just isn't worth living any, anymore. Where did Paul say that for me to die is gain, but for me to Christ? Uh, I don't. 
I don't know exactly where where it says that. Regardless, he looked at death as 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 win. Yeah, well, that doesn't help your situation no, very much it sometimes. Does, it does. What I'm saying is, you know, that, that you know, it's, there's some people who misconstrue that as the, the only victory I'm going to have over the problems in this life is death. Is is going home to be with you. So they can they can get that twisted in their head. I've right. Seen people do that before. Well, well, when they when they think like this, Paul is even admitting here. Yeah. He says, "But this was. It's not about me. It's about you. It's a, why am I here?" You know, I'm not here for my for my own self. I'm here for other people. And if what I'm going through will help you, unless God does something that, that causes my life to be taken, I'm here to do His will. I'm here to serve Him. And He can uh, and He can get you through it. But you have to have faith. You have to trust Him that that He really will get you through because He does love you. But sometimes, whenever you're going through things, you don't feel very loved at the time. And and God is He is trying to grow you, whether the, despite whether it's your fault or not. Sometimes you go through things that you have no control over. The Apostle Paul was like, I have no control over what's going on in my life. But in Luke in verse 10, he says, The God who raises, from, uh, raises the dead has delivered us from so great a death and doeth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. So even while he's writing this, he's like, this is still on us. We're still dealing with this. But I recognize there is something in Corinth that needs to be said. It needs to be done. In fact, this letter has gone out to, a, to even you tonight because you may experience this in your life. It's very, very possible that it, you will experience this type of mentality in your life. The reason I say that is because I've been there myself. I know this feeling. I know what it feels like. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. But you have to look past, you know, how you feel, and you have to look at how does that glorify God if I went in this circumstance. Yes, ma'am. A lot of people, you know, that are, like, they have those thoughts tend to not have a rational voice in their life. Like, they're just like, they just do what they're doing. Well, you know, what you're saying there is, is exactly, you know, what we've been experiencing um, in uh, this COVID-19. The stay-at-home orders that the, that the government has had has had a horrible effect on the, men, on the mental state of many people. Suicides are up. Teen suicides has skyrocketed. They have no rational voice in their life. It's craziness going on. And that's exactly what the devil wants to do is he's loving COVID-19. In fact, I wouldn't just, yeah, he wants you to be isolated. And where God says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, the devil says, forsake the assembling of yourselves together so I can have you and I can destroy you. Because that's what he's going to do. He's going to get you in this little box and you're going to ice, you're going to self-isolate and you're going to think, you're going to come, you're going to start thinking bad thoughts. That's what happens when you feel isolated. Because he's got you. There's no rational voice in your mind. And it doesn't matter how great a Christian you are at this moment, you are able to go down that dark path. Many good Christians, even the Apostle Paul who wrote 2 Corinthians, went down that path. But you know what? He had a friend with him. He says it up at the top, Timothy, our brother. So he had a very, uh, a very good guy beside him. And because, and because he was there... He was able to get through this stuff with, uh, with Timothy and maybe even some other ones. So uh, uh, looking at, uh, look at continuing on, it says uh, in verse 11, Yea, also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may, may be given by many on our behalf. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you know that somebody is going through things, Pray for them, okay? If you wake up in the middle of the night and that person immediately comes to your mind, don't go back to sleep without praying for them, okay? 
That is irresponsible on your part if you do. So keep that in mind. If God wakes you up, part of that is pray for them that it may be what, what they need at that time uh, during your morning devotions and before while you're driving to work or going to school or whatever. Make sure you've got a, you've got a prayer list and you, and you pray for people, okay? Maybe you don't pray for every single person on your list every single day, but have a list and pray for people you know, it, because they're going to be going through stuff. Yes. I was going to say, I think sometimes in our prayer life, we can get discouraged if we don't see results or if we, if we feel like we're not seeing results from our prayers. And, uh, you know, God expects us to pray for each other and, and actually lays that as a responsibility at our feet. You know, if, if we don't pray for those mm -hmm. people, then we get held accountable for that and judge that. Sure. You know? um, kind of like James said, you know, the perfect sexual prayer of the righteous man is much. Yep. So that they, includes they, women, too. Yeah, exactly. You got to stand against sick people. Um, but, uh, but I mean, the devil wants us to believe that our prayers aren't doing anything. Sure. And, and God reiterates over and over and over through the scriptures. In every scripture you read, fast and pray. Fast, fast. Yep, yep. And, that, that's what we're and, that, and you know, and Paul admits that's what got him through that. Did, did you have something, ma'am? Because um, um, I find it weird that God can put things in my head like that, like telling me to pray for certain people, even if like, they don't say anything. Right. Pray for them. Oh yeah, that that happen that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. um, look at verse. Uh, anybody else? First that, that verse that he uh, that Sean quoted. Yes, sir. The first part of that verse says, "Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed." Yep. Um, you know, it is it is good if you have somebody that you can confide in that you know this person is gonna this person is gonna keep my secrets. You know, unless you're doing something really Ill illegal, uh, but if you're just struggling through life, um, you know they can, you know they can get you through it. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you need somebody like that. Everybody needs somebody like that in their life. That doesn't mean everybody. You should confess yourself to everybody. We do not need to know your gossip. Um, but if there's somebody in your life that you know, I can trust this person. They're going to keep a secret, um, and uh, and I know that they will pray for me rightly. Yes, ma'am. Because I know that um, a lot of people would probably confide in their parents, but like you don't have to just confide in your parents. You can find like another good Christian influence to talk to, especially if like something is wrong with them, or like you don't feel like that you can really go to them with a problem. Like I mean, you should be able to, able to, but sometimes it. Can Yeah, it, you know, sometimes uh, you probably, maybe you have multiple people that you go to about different things. <laughs> you know, um, you know who you can go to about kind of like you got that friend who's a mechanic and you got that friend who just, you know, knows how to fix the plumbing, you know? <laughs> yep, yep, you, you know. <laughs> they're not always the same guy. <laughs> they're not always the same guy. Um, because for sure, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna go to him about problems that you're having with him, right? <laughs> Unless, do you know this about yourself? <laughs> that usually doesn't end well. All right, look at verse twelve. Is for our rejoicing is this the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity, uh, godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but the grace of God. We have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you. So uh, we've had quite a, a good discussion so far. I want you to know that, you know, when you're going through things, um, you're going through them for a reason. It's not for no reason that you're going through things. You're, everything is for a purpose. You are created for a purpose. You go through things for a purpose. Sometimes you go through things because of your own making. That in itself is for a purpose, to fix you. Don't do that again, you know? <laughs> well, remember what Justin said, you know, what, what, what he meant for evil, God meant for good. So, right. You know, even if it's our own evil. Yeah, if you'll let God use what it is for good. Now, that, that usually only works.
only works out for those who are called according to his purpose. Now, understand what I'm saying about that. If God is not your savior, sometimes those things that, that uh, are going on in your life, you know, if you're dealing drugs and you get killed by other drug dealers, um, you know, that doesn't work out so good for you, okay? But if you can, if you can recognize, you know, what I did was wrong and I need a savior, but I end up going to jail anyway because I'm being held accountable for my actions, that thing will work out for good for you because, you know, God's helping you get back on the right track and he's he taking you away from you. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's reasons God put this place in. Yep. Yeah. If he wasn't in prison, we wouldn't have got uh, we wouldn't have got a lot of the letters of the New Testament. Absolutely. Um, if you if you want if you want to look with me or uh, you know just kind of uh, hear me out for just a moment, Romans five chapter five verses three through five. The Apostle Paul writes something very similar to the, to the Romans that he did here in Corinthians, and he says, "Not only so, but we glory in tribulations also." Can you imagine that, Paul? Are you crazy that you're going to glory in going through hard things? He says, he says, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. You know, some of the things that has to be fixed in us is our ability to wait on God and allow him to do some mighty things through us as we're going through it. It's not easy. It's not fun. Uh, you, you probably won't like it. But at the end of the day, it teaches you something about God and yourself. You know, sometimes we forget that lesson. God has to sometimes show you something about yourself. Sometimes that picture is not very pretty. About whenever you take your, you take that step back, and you're like, I thought I was so good, I thought I was so smart, and then you look at yourself, and you're like, that's a horrible person. Look like that beast. That yeah, you look like you look like one of those beast characters from Daniel or Revelation, and you're like, that's me. And but God can fix that. God can fix that. He can work that patience. And patience, get this, patience gives you experience. Yep, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I know how to handle this now. So the next time when I go through something like that, or maybe you are confronted with someone who's experiencing something very similar, you know how to help them. And you know at least the right steps, the right approach. Now don't think that just because you've had the experience that, oh yeah, I can fix it just like that. Uh, did it? Did you get fixed just like that, or was it a process? It's a process in every single person. And when you're dealing with personalities, uh, you know you have to. Sometimes you have to go through that. That is experience. You understand that. But here's the deal: if you got that experience and you've gone through something, what do you have now? You've got hope. I can do this. God is faithful. No matter what. What's the worst that can happen? The Apostle Paul says, the worst that can happen is that I die and go to heaven. That's the worst that can happen. That's a pretty good outcome. Yeah, that's a pretty good outcome. He's like, as long for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Yeah, you're threatening me with Jesus. Really? Really? That's what you you want to take my life so I can see Jesus? Have fun, buddy. Have fun. Into a godly family and raised Christian their whole life, and somebody mm -hmm. who's been through, you know, 
living in, in an ungodly household, you know, with parents who didn't even care about it. You know, same thing with Paul, you know, he, he lives on the side of the, the sword where he was going out persecuting and killing Christians. You know, right. He, and he, he knew what he was forgiven of, and that allowed him to be patient with the, the shortcomings of the other people that he dealt with in his life. Sure. And that, that's why he had so much insight into, into, into human you know, shortcomings. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and like he said, you know, of sinners, I'm the chiefest. You know, he, he looked at himself as worse than anyone. Right. He he had that epiphany in his life where he recognized who he really was in God's eyes, and that you know that's a scary place to think about. But if you can do that, well, you you can learn a whole lot about well, how do I get past this? And when you have that hope, like the Apostle Paul is talking about here, he says the next thing is you won't be ashamed. Not ashamed. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, you probably won't even be ashamed of who you were because you can say, this is who I was, but I've been delivered. I was dead in sin, but now I'm alive in Jesus Christ. I was not valuable to the world or to God, but now I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And he has made me a king or a queen for his honor and for his glory. And I'm going to see him one day. Despite who I was, that's not, that's the person that I used to be. That's not who I am anymore. I'm not ashamed of that. I've been saved. I've been like Ruth. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Born again. Ready to walk according to His will. And if I mess up, guess what? I know I have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus Christ. You know, that's that's what the Apostle Paul is teaching here. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You see, it's not me anymore that's living. It's Jesus living through me. The Holy Ghost is sealed inside of me. I have, he gives me a new mind. Yeah, there's some things to fix, but he can do it. And I have total confidence that he can do it. And whatever it is that I've gone through, Romans 8, 28 comes into play. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Every person in this world is called to his purpose. Will you accept the, the call? If you will accept the call, everything is working out to, to the good for you. Do you recognize that? Even the bad things. God's trying to get your attention. He's trying to draw you closer to himself. All the bad things that you've experienced, God can even work through those things to draw you closer to himself. Why? Because he loves you. He really does love you. And if you get in trouble because you did something bad, well, he's just trying to get your attention. It, even if, you're, if you think that you're living for him and something bad happens, well, Maybe it's not just your attention that he's trying to get, but he's trying to use you to get someone else's attention. And he knows that the only way to get their attention is for something to happen to you. God is willing. Do you recognize that? That for Brother Bill tells this story well, right? You're, you know, you're adopted, you're adopted children that they wouldn't have got saved had your wife not been in that accident. Yes. You know, that's yes. a huge loss. I mean... He lost, his, he lost his wife, but in that loss, he was able to gain not just, uh, you know, a family, you know, more family, grant, people that he calls his children now, he gained two more for the cause of Christ. They're like, they're like my own flesh and blood. Right. Uh, what we're talking about here is growing up, and growing up can be tough. Uh, when my oldest son was 12 years old, he told me he was afraid to grow up because he saw the world out there as scary, a scary place, and he wasn't ready for adulthood. And uh, growing up, when the, and he made reference to the Apostle Paul, to die is gain, to, to live is gain, to die is, I'm, I'm messing up the quote, <laughs> help me. For me to die live is Christ. Christ. Yeah. Okay, at that point in, Paul's life, he was getting close to graduation, but he, Paul started off like we all 
most of them start off at pretty close to zero. And our whole life is a growth experience. And we who have turned our lives over to the Lord Jesus has his spirit living within us to help us and guide us through the tough places. And that's what we're talking about right here. The person that don't have that are working under a very, very heavy handicap. Right. Yep. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, that's where we come into play. When there's a handicap in somebody's life, God fills that handicap gap with you. And, uh, you know, you've got to be willing. You've got to be ready. You know, those aren't things that you pray about. Does that make sense? When somebody comes to you and has some kind of issue, that's not the time to pray. You need to be prayed up already. You need to be praying in your own personal prayer closet. Your prayer, your fasting, God, use me somehow, here I, somewhere. Here am, here am I. Send me. Yep, just like you know, just like just like Isaiah says. Hebrews chapter twelve, verses ten through eleven. It says, for they verily for a few days chasteneth us with their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. You know, sometimes when you're going through things, you're like, I don't see how in the world God can use this to, to, be, uh, to exercise his holiness. But when you get through to the end of it, when you've got that patience, when you've got that experience, and you've got that hope, and you're not ashamed any longer of anything that's, that's, that's been in your past, but you're always looking forward to the future, you can be used for his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. Paul admits, just like we feel, it's not fun while you're going through it. It's not a joyful time. It's grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So when you're going through things, you need to recognize that maybe I am experiencing uh you know, God's righteous correction. I'm going through things, but at the end, it helps me and it helps others. Is it worth it? Listen, if you are a child of God and God puts you through something, you're, you have the mindset, God's using this for some reason. I don't know what the reason is yet, but he's going to use me somehow, some way, someday. Some, it may be 20, 30 years down the road. You don't know. But God's got a plan, and he's preparing you for that plan. Sometimes it takes a whole lot of training to get you there. But when you are there, be prepared to be used to, to show God's greatness, his grace, his mercy, his holiness, his righteousness. And there's only one person in the whole entire world that can reach them with the gospel of Christ at that given time, and that will be you. And God is preparing you right now for something, for someone. Be ready. Exercise exactly what the Apostle Paul says right here. When you go through that correction process, accept it. Maybe it's not fun. Maybe it's not joyful. But you know that on the latter end, it's going to be good for God's glory. And that's what you care about. You're not worried about yourself. You're worried about his glory and his honor. That's why I'm alive today. That's why I'm in front of you. It's for his glory, not for mine. You know, I could have been a professional bass fisherman. <laughs> but instead, I'm here. And you know what? Because it's, it's about God's stuff, not my stuff. And uh, it's not about my wants. It's his wants. And he has given me, a, you know, a good ride along the way. Um, I say a good ride. There's been some tough times. There's been some really tough times. But those tough times help me get our, uh, you know, I'm dealing with something right now where some of my, some of the tough times that I've experienced in my life, I'm, not, I'm able to help someone else get through a very tough time in their life. To be an encouraged to them. It doesn't go, it doesn't go fast, but I'm praying for them. Just like the Apostle Paul says, I'm talking to them on a regular basis to encourage them and uh, just try to make them, just try to keep them on track with what God is doing in their life. And preparing them to be used, just like I'm being, I, I'm being used right now, that they're going to be used in the future also. And if they watch this, they'll know who they are. So, and even maybe you, maybe maybe it's you today. That's okay. 
Let God work His will, His healing in your life. And I'm going to stop there. There is a lot more, but we're having such a good conversation. I don't want to. I don't want to rush through the next part. So, any final thoughts or comments? Well, good stuff, Brother Sean. Would you dismiss us? Oh, I'm sorry. Brother Bill. In my personal life, I have become aware that the Lord Jesus will not share information with you until you are in a mental state where you can accept it. And sometimes it takes years and years and years to get you to that point. Absolutely. Yep. And it, I think a lot of us underestimate the intimacy that the Lord Jesus has with each of us. It, it, the way I process it I know the Lord Jesus made us. That's real plain from the scripture. He made us. He did a piece of work when he made us. He made our little peanut brains and he knows exactly how they work. There's multiple inferences in the Bible about Jesus knowing what we think. And understanding that on a real deep level and it Sometimes it takes a long time to get us to a point where we are open to accepting some discipline that Je the Lord Jesus has got, mm -hmm. that he has, he has been working on us, maybe in my case, maybe 30, 40, 50 years. And I'm just now starting to understand why he right. did certain things in my life. Yep. That's, you know, that's the key. That The shortcut is uh, don't fight him. Don't fight God on what he's trying to teach you. Just go with it. Uh, just like Tol uh, Tolkien, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he, he makes a, a quote like this. Uh, is, is one of my favorites that he says, it's doubtful God can use somebody greatly until he's hurt them deeply. And that's, uh, you know, that's just the heart of God. God hurt deeply. And he, and, and he did that through Jesus Christ. He allowed, he allowed himself to be hurt deeply to be used greatly for your salvation. So with that, Brother Sean, you dismiss us. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this time that we have to gather together in your name and study your word. We just ask that you help each of us to take the lessons um, that we learned here tonight and apply it to our lives. Just help us to, to seek your will. Thank you.